Tomorrow will be the opening of the European Youth Media Days, an event that will gather here in Brussels 270 journalists from across Europe. Together, they will discuss the future of med European media and they will produce media as well. With us, we have Mrs. Wallström. She is the Vice President of the European Commission and as well responsible for the institutional relations and communication. Well, thank you so much for being here with thank us, you. Mrs. Wallström. My pleasure. Mrs. Wallström, as a Vice President and Commissioner, you are among other things in charge of being responsible for the international relations and communications. So in other words, you shall explain to European citizen what this whole idea is about. And uh, two months ago, I believe, you said you want to create a Europe which is easy to fall in love with. So I was wondering, could you just name three characteristics of this Europe we all cannot resist? I think I would say sustain, a sustainable development uh, in, in Europe means that uh, we want economic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be able to uh, have a work and, uh, and prosper in Europe. But we also want the environment to be clean, you know, clean uh, air and, and water. Uh, and of course we want social security as well. We, we want to show solidarity and we want to know that uh, we can adapt to this changing reality in Europe and still feel that we, are, uh, that we have a society that protects us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean the economic integration of Europe isn't actually already very strong but the political integration is just right now in the making. What do you think, you as a commission, how can you re prepare the citizen for this European enterprise? Well, to me it's very much about um, doing something about the democratic deficit. I think that this has been a project for a small political elite for the first 50 years of European integration. And I think now we have to move towards making it uh, also a, a project for, for all citizens. And uh, I think they both want and can part of, of this, uh, this, this project and the, the discussions about the future of Europe. How are we going to live together in a European Union consisting of uh, 27 member states and soon more member states? And, and uh, how do we take decisions together? How do we want to ensure that we can live sustainable? But political integration is a rather hard pr um, process. What, how, how do you think that the constitutional treaty can change this uh, process? I think that uh, we have now a reform treaty which helps us to um, uh, be clearer about who does what. Uh, what should the European Union take decisions on? What should member states decide on? Uh, we also have um, a possibility to be more open and democratic. We have the possibility of participatory democracy, citizens' initiative. If one million citizens want um, the Commission to take an initiative, they can uh, put their signatures on, on such an initiative. I think it's a good thing. And uh, also we will be able to uh, speak with one voice, I hope, because we will give uh, the way we organize work in the European Union, it would be easier to also act credibly on the international scene. So I think to sort out um, how, to, uh, how the institutions should work, how, how to take decisions and invite uh, citizens better. The goal of the European Youth Media Days is to start a big discussion around the future of European media. Um, how do you think this, this Congress can be a role model in order to, um, to shape the networks and the reality that exists uh, in, in the media that in our days has, have a tendency to close themselves in national realities? Mm -hmm. Well, still very much of the debate is, is national. Media are national, the political, um, the political reality is, is national. And uh, what I would like to contribute to is to see that we can create a European, a European public sphere. And then I think we need, of course, European media. Uh, and we need to go through the channels which most people use for uh, getting information uh, about the European Union and communicating on Europe. And that is, of course, TV and radio, uh, and as well we as the it. Internet. Well, we have to provide sort of better material and the better chances for, for both TV and radio to cover what goes on here and also make the basis for the stories uh, necessary to report on what do we do on migration. 
uh, how do we tackle climate change? What do we do about uh, uh, trade uh, in, in the world? And what is the EU's role on, on trade, uh, etc.? So I think that uh, this can, can be, become much more professional the way we uh, also um, engage with, with the media. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, for example, the citizen summary <clears throat> is a very important thing, that all proposals that come from here should be in a citizen summary, easily understandable and accessible. Mm. One also very important group of the, all these citizens are the young people because they are the future generation growing up with exactly this feeling of being a unified Europe maybe. What have, has been proved successful in the past for the Commission um, to contact young people and address their concerns? The very concrete uh, issues like uh, of course Erasmus as mm. a, a model for getting to know other member states to go to travel somewhere and, and study and meet with, with other young people. Of course that's the best uh, way to, to start mm. to better understand uh, the, the rest of Europe as well not only your own country and then uh, the, the co very concrete issues. I think young people expect us to act on issues like the roaming charges, you know, make cheaper mobile phone calls or to act on the environmental issues. Uh, uh, and this is the best way to demonstrate that we are relevant, that it is important what we do. Mm -hmm. And of course also to send a signal to invite them. Mm -hmm. Are you confident about the uh, European spirit of the, this young generation? I, I am. I mean, uh, it's not only a... a a saying that um, the future belongs to, to young people. They, they are our most important asset to the young generation and I think that's where we have to start and I think uh, sustainable development means that you actually bring um, the future and the rest of the world into the picture and that's what we have to do through, through young people and our children. Some of the first steps in your political career was actually working with the Socialist Democratic Youth League in Sweden and also being a minister for youth affairs back in Sweden. Um, did you, what kind of challenges did you face during this job and can you use these experiences today to work with young people? I hope we all learn lessons from, uh, from, from the past and from all experience we, we make in, in, in life uh, and of course uh, uh, our concerns were very um, direct and concrete because it was a high, high youth unemployment and um, to, to be able to fight for, for jobs for young people and, and good education and sort of equal access to education and universities and, and these, uh, these things were the most important and, and that's where the sort of fight had, had to start. But, but also really testing how to give a voice to young people, to give them a role in, in society and a platform. And uh, I think that has helped me ever, ever since to understand what goes on. And I remember the feeling of being unemployed because I've also been, you know, un uh, experienced unemployment and, and I still can recall that feeling. Mm. So how can the Commission uh, address young people in uh, improve how can the Commission improve the way they address I to young people? I think we have a number of, of uh, instruments um, available. I think that we can do more, more through uh, Erasmus and I think also with voluntary service. I think a lot of people would like to do something hands-on, something practical, if it is mm -hmm. to clean up after an oil spill or, or if it is to help uh, refugees who come to, uh, to a country or whatever. And I think that these are the, the type of or very concrete services that we could uh, also expand and, and build on. But we have mm -hmm. to show that we are relevant politically by uh, addressing these issues that are most important to, to young people and for the future. Do you think that it's easier today than for young people to raise their voice and make a difference? Or are they also maybe much more than in the past pressured by the, for, like, the need to find a job, find a family? Um, I think it's, it's very chances? difficult to, to compare. I think in many ways, of course, the young generation, uh, they have a life which is uh, in many ways easier than, than their parents. Uh, on the other hand, the pressure on young people to to, to do everything, to travel, to look good, to, to uh, you know, exercise, to uh, do sports, to be successful. I think that this is also horrible and especially on, on young women I can see this, that you know, the kind of ideal that we live with is a very difficult one. And at the same time many more channels to express your, your views but um, it's, it also puts a pressure on you and uh, this is um, where I hope 
um, we can we can provide and, and of course civil society can provide provide a, a chance to discuss with others and uh, mm -hmm. also to in, enjoy life only okay mrs Vashrom, thank you so much for being here with us thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much hope to see you tomorrow in the european youth media days <laughs>